Now, let us go ahead with measuring the outcomes. We tried to understand brand audit, brand research to analyze that what kind of strategic steps we should be taking. We thought of the marketing program aspects, decisions related to a marketing program. The value chain is the guiding force, the resonance pyramid is the guiding force. We have an architecture in mind, we are thinking with the perspective of a designer. And we have taken some steps, we, we have gone ahead. Let us say we have generated a hierarchy, we, we have designed a portfolio, we are going ahead with that portfolio, it is living by itself, it is working now. Now, the, the most important element which comes to us is, let us look into the outcomes, whatever we have done, let us try to measure those. And that is the most important element because we want to go ahead now, we want to go further. So, we have to look at what have we done before again talking to people, what should we do now and then to decide on what is, what is to be done next. And it is a longitudinal ongoing process. And then as I said, generating brand equity is the objective, value has to come up. So, value has to be enumerated in terms of numbers, it has to be deciphered that way because that will bring on premium, that will bring on stockholders value, stakeholders value at large. So, that is the point of concern for so next two sessions at large. Now, brand equity consists of as we know two components largely and we have mentioned uh, you know we have talked about this brand power that is the strength and brand value. And to understand how customers evaluate brand equity, we need to have an understanding of both these components. And then I have tried to elaborate almost you know. Uh, all these aspects before as well. So, I will not be actually going on you know uh, expanding on these concepts at this stage or, or elaborating upon the subject as such. I am referring to these with reference to measuring the outcomes. So, brand value or the financial performance that is where uh, the perspective comes in and brand power the strength that means customer based measures. So, that can be seen that way. <coughs> now, you see there are some comparative methods for these. Comparative methods are research studies or experiments that examine and mark these words experiments. Now, those can be conducted in control and uncontrolled or non-controlled environment as well. So, experiments that examine consumer attitudes and behavior towards a brand to directly estimate specific benefits arising from having a high level of awareness and strong favorable and unique brand associations. I mentioned about quantitative techniques when I was talking about brand research. So, here if there is a, uh, if, if we have uh, you know designated two aspects as variables, correlation of those variables, impact of one on the other can be deciphered if we go for uh, let us say descriptive research design based consumer researches. But then I mentioned one thing more, because we have to understand the mindset of the consumer, we have to understand the feelings and emotions of the consumer. That means, we objective has always been to reaching to the hearts of uh, the consumer. So, their reflexivity perspective always accompanies us. Now, you see you must have noticed customers comparing automotives for example. And it is a general thing, it is a 
uh, it is a very common sight actually you know in, in uh, uh, for example, institutions like these uh, uh, budding executives, engineers, technocrats, managers, professors uh, you know they, they keep on talking on what kind of automotive would they be buying in uh, times to come. And then they start you know comparing those you know the, the engine efficiency because most of them are aware of these kind of things. So, so the engine efficiency, torque and those kind of things and, and several other things. Now, now you must have noticed people talking about comparison in terms of cricket teams, which team is doing what and, and what kind of player strength they have and so on. Then restaurants. Now, it is again a very entertaining kind of a thing basically whenever uh, families and COVID has definitely uh, put up a huge hindrance in this kind of a thing, but, but uh, things are opening up slowly uh, and then uh, we are uh, you know at the end of 2021, hopefully 2022 would be you know a relieving one uh, as far as you know this, this disaster goes. So, Restaurants people when, whenever they plan for weekends or when, whenever they plan for evening dinners or, or afternoon lunches, they, they compare restaurants. They, they remember the kind of cuisine, they remember the kind of menu and they try to put up, they, they try to generate references and so on. Movies, you, you must have seen people comparing one movie of the same star with her or his earlier movie or two different stars, two different movies, two different directors and so on. So, so there are several comparisons which you know come into being. Now, there are three types of comparative methods largely. One is brand based comparative approach and that is precisely when I, I said that comparing automotives or you know those kind of and then marketing based comparative approaches and then conjoint analysis largely uh, we can we can talk about these three otherwise there there can be sev several others also consumers may interpret marketing activity for a fictitiously named or unnamed version i have i've talked about this when i when i said that you know they are shown pictures of cars with logos without logos so here comparative approaches we can we can think of that and those kind of methodologies can be engaged here but the objective is to compare. So, consumers may interpret marketing activity for a fictitiously named or unnamed version of a product or service in terms of their general product category knowledge. They may also have a particular brand or exemplar in mind. That means, here the brand managers they are uh, you know searching for a pathway to become a brand to follow the footsteps probably of an established brand or to compare where do they stand in compare comparison to the other brands even if they are uh, you know not so uh, well or are not so strong as compared to themselves. Exemplar may be the category leader or some other brand that consumers feel is representative of the category like their most preferred brand. So, that is where you know a benchmark comes into play. Applications of this uh, is that one natural application of brand based comparison uh, comparative approach is product purchase or consumption research for new or existing products as long as the brand identification can be hidden in some way for the unbranded control group. The point is that how comparatively likable my brand is. The classic example of the brand based comparative approach is blind testing research studies in which different consumers examine or use a product with or without brand identification. Now, this is interesting actually. Uh, I, I brought a gift for my daughter once and uh, I did not show her the you know the brand name. And she said, no, no, that those were earrings if I remember correctly. No, 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 she said, well, they look nice, okay. And then I suddenly suggested from where they are and the likability increased. If she would watch this video someday, she would accuse me of 
revealing that secret, but definitely this happens. And same, same happens in blind testing basically. For example, in one study people who were asked to blind test Coca Cola and two store brands of cola split their preferences almost evenly among three that is 30 percent, 31 percent of coke, 33 percent and 35 percent of the others. They did not know what they are drinking you know kind of similar, similar kinds of tests. But when the samples were identified 50 percent of other participants in the experiment said they preferred coke. So, the point is name actually justifies the taste most of the times and that is why you know we like coke or many of you like Pepsi. So, the results suggest that brand equity and brand loyalty also affect taste preference judgments. Now, have you tried this in case of sweet shops in your city? You know, you buy something, you buy your favorite samosa from somewhere, and you don't tell uh, you know someone at uh, office or home that you have purchased that samosa from the favorite shop of the city. So they would say, well, somehow. And if you say that I have purchased this from that particular shop, that you know the the reception becomes stronger. That is where the branding perspective comes in, and it's it's a it's a very important thing for us to realize where do we stand. Why not 70 percent? Why 50 percent? This may be the question now after the revelation comes in front of let us say any research. And now after brand based comparison there is a marketing based comparative approach. Now they hold this, this kind of approaches hold the brand fixed and examine consumer response based on changes in marketing program. Again you want to judge on what kind of actions you have taken and how have they been working. So, the application of this kind of an approach is that you know uh, there is a long academic and industry tradition of exploring price premiums using marketing based comparative approaches. For example, Intel would routinely survey computer shoppers to find out how much of discount they would require before switching to a personal computer that did not have Intel microprocessor. And I think many manufacturers they actually utilize this uh, strategy. I cannot say this with conformity, but I presume that I have heard somewhere that other uh, com computers having other processors might have offered some you know discount or, or let us say lower prices to attract the customers and Intel precisely wants to know that to what extent customer would stay. And remember I mentioned about price elasticities uh, in some of our preceding discussions. So, that is where you know marketing program based or marketing based comparative approaches come in. For example, you have gone through a wonderful integrated marketing communication campaign and you know that this is going to impact and that is the point when you decide to charge a premium. And if sale is going high you may think in terms of keeping the price consistent also. So, that is how you know for example, uh, uh, I would not be able to comment on uh, the pricing of McDonald's at this moment, but their marketing program or uh, let us say specifically integrated marketing communication along with introduction of some new products definitely can be measured across with these kind of approaches. Let us think of conjoint analysis. It is a survey based multivariate technique, several variables are there that enables marketers to profile the consumer decision process concerning products and brands. Specifically by asking consumers to express preferences or choose among a number of carefully designed product profiles. Researchers can determine the trade offs consumers are making between various brand attributes and the importance they are attaching to them. 
So, you have to divide the whole scenario into several variables and then you have to find out the correlation of those variables with each other and try to decipher on which specifically is actually impacting what and that is the point of analysis. You see the point is that because we have been introducing several aspects to our branding journey, we are utilizing elements, we are accompanying those elements with different kinds of marketing programs and efforts or let us say we are utilizing multipliers, we have talked about multipliers in value chain and while we are focusing upon those multipliers, we must understand that what kind of an impact those multipliers are putting on as far as the whole marketing program scenario goes and how that has been converted into a market performance because that is going to be the deciding factor on developing stockholders value and if we have already gone to the stock market and we have got a response from the side of the stock uh, holders that is different point than, than the value of the stock itself suggest, is suggestive of the fact that what has been done but to what extent it has been done would be the question and if we are going towards the stock market then it is a very important question at this stage and that is where you know multivariate analysis and those uh, the similar aspects they come into play. Now, Marriott used conjoint analysis to design a new hotel chain, it is very interesting, very important because you want to go for expansion. Now, let us see courtyard by Marriott and we are talking of conjoint analysis. Marriott used conjoint analysis to design a new hotel chain and here we are talking about expansion, brand extension and I will be talking about brand extension as the concept in my subsequent sessions. But you see the point is an organization is trying to grow and they are trying to use the elements in the upcoming scaled up business. The study provided specific guidelines for selecting target market segments, positioning, services and designing an improved facility in terms of physical layout and other services. So, they, they went through all the understanding which we have developed in terms of uh, branding research and they have started working upon measuring the brand outcomes and to utilize those for expansion. Based on these strategy and design recommendations, Marriott developed the courtyard by Marriott and you know which it has successfully test marketed and subsequently introduced nationally and, and at a larger level and then source is mentioned for you and, and uh, you can uh, further decipher that. But just to tell you it is a huge hotel chain with very large property sizes and I have been told that they have more than 12,000 or, or more rooms uh, with them or, or this may be a vague number but we can check it is a large uh, you know number which they manage in terms of rooms as as uh, hotel rooms and, and the quality has been exceptionally established. It is not that such other chains are not there, there are several good chains but, but we are using this example for actually uh, pondering upon how conjoint analysis worked for them for coming up with courtyard by Marriott. The effectiveness of the study and associated processes also changed Marriott's approach to new product development. What customer would like to have further, what customer would like uh, you know uh, uh, would, would feel like uh, redundant as such, would not you know uh, give value at all despite of the fact that uh, that would require lots of resources and energy that is that is precisely what uh, you know uh, they, they thought of and here everything is in terms of generating brand equity at the later stages. Merit has since developed additional lodging and related products successfully using similar procedures. The methodology, 
worked for them. A questionnaire was designed to question respondents on characteristics they prefer in hotels. Each respondent was given seven cards one at a time. Each card dealt with one of the seven facets, sets of attributes of hotel that is external factors, rooms, food, lounge, services, leisure, security. For each card, there was one facet which had their own attributes with corresponding price. For example, in case of entertainment attribute of rooms, the five levels range from color TV at no extra cost to color TV with a choice of three in room movies for two and a half dollars or so. So, these this is an example what they did and, and uh, as it has been mentioned in the source which has been used uh, Keller and Swaminathan strategic brand management building measuring and managing brand equity. We have taken this example from this book. So, but again the point is that this kind of an analysis has been used by several organizations and several brands to understand the correlation of the variables they choose to compare with their own services, others services and to look for the way forward especially with the perspective of capitalization of the brand they hold and that is what precisely we are referring to. The respondents were asked to think about their usual hotel stay for business purposes or pleasure and more or less many people do that and then you see you, you, you must have filled up feedback forms. Those feedback forms are actually questionnaires and to check the triangle in each row that best describe the hotel they currently used. So, respondents were asked to put up you know uh, what is the purpose. Next, the respondent supplied one of the three possible responses to each amenity price combination. At the end, we all want to know that if the price is felt to be justified by the consumer or it is just a piecemeal kind of an acceptance by the consumer and once he gets the better deals might be shifting to other services. So, uh, the amenity price combination wherein the combination is completely unacceptable, the combination is most preferred and the combination is acceptable. Respondents were also asked to rank various factors within the facet of their relative importance. Now come the uh, you know uh, holistic methods. So, there are some holistic methods. Holistic methods place an overall value on the brand in either abstract utility terms or concrete financial terms. Holistic methods attempt to net out various considerations to determine the unique contribution of the brand. It can be seen with two perspectives, the residual approach and the valuation approach. Again, here it is very important for us to understand one thing and I will just reiterate. We have talked about brand based comparative approaches that is and when I say brand, name, symbol, logo, all the elements together and what it means, what do we feel about that and then marketing based or marketing program based comparative approaches. So, what we are trying to do is we are having competition in mind that can be as wide as share of the pocket competition because we want to attract customer to gain number of customers to gain market share. So, comparison and direct competition direct com comparison definitely is, is a mainstay because we want to understand that if at all this kind of an intensity which we are going through, this kind of an intensity which we are going through is required to establish or, or to is required to propel our brand because many a times there may be a question in front of brand managers that there are many organizations 
who are known but not so well known. So, what kind of a premium we would be gaining out of what whatever we are doing in terms of our marketing programs. And that is where marketing program based comparison analysis comes into play and then comes in conjoint analysis. So, here comparison is you know coming our way. Now, once we have gone through comparison that is that is precisely element to element kind of or, or aspect to aspect or variable to variable or dependence or independence kind of thing basically. At this moment when we are going for point to point comparison dependence and independence of variables so as to understand that is the price justified for example or let us say what kind of expansion should we be doing in terms of our services for example what Maria did. Now we want to move towards a holistic scenario. So, point to point to a holistic understanding and that is that is the uh, uh, that is an important thing for us to realize at this stage because we talked about designing an architecture thinking in terms of potential. So, we have to be precise on point to point comparison and then we have to have a, a, a holistic kind of view in front of us. And that is where holistic methods they come in and then two approaches broadly would explain the point which I am trying to make here. So, first is residual approach. Now, the rationale behind residual approaches is the view that brand equity is what remains of consumer preferences and choices after we subtract physical product effects. So, there is a core product let us say a sweet or let us say a chocolate. And then there is five star, my favorite. So, so that is that is the perspective, you know. We have this this kind of an element while talking of. So, there is a shoe, then there is Nike, there is an institution, then there is IIT Roorkee. So, that is the perspective we are talking of as far as you know the, the whole situation goes. So, an institution, a good institution. IIT Roorkee. So, you see that is that is the precise point which we are trying to understand here. The idea is that we can infer the relative valuation of brands by observing consumer preferences and choices if we take into account as many sources of measured attribute values as possible. So, how the name would live by itself? It is not that uh, the brand manager is not worried about what kind of attributes they have actually uh, you know uh, projected in front of the consumers, the utility the consumer has in mind, the, the justification of the price the consumer has in mind. It is not that they would be overlooking that anyways, but the point is they want to reach at the stage wherein you randomly go to the shop and ask for the name and that is where where brand managers focus is. So, for example, you just go and you say good night mat or I talked about handy plast or band aid or digene. So, so that is that is fair you see when when antacid comes to your mind you know kind of or eno it straight away comes to your mind and that is that is precisely and then that that means that Eno as a product carries everything which which uh, you know it it, it is supposed to uh, carry. But the point is that you think in terms of the name before the product at this stage, and then comes in valuation approach. A widely held belief is that much of the corporate value of many companies are wrapped up in the value of their brands. We talked about corporate branding, we talked about the desire of the brand manager that everything should be named, should be known by the name of the company itself and they should live up to their name with all the products they can produce and take to the customers. So, here the same uh, you know measurement approach is also there with us and then that, that, that says that corporate value of many companies are wrapped up in the value of their brands. 
in determining the value of a brand firms can choose from three main approaches the cost the market and the income approach and i'll briefly briefly mention about these wherein the cost approach maintains that brand equity is the amount of money that would be required to reproduce or replace the brand including all costs for research and development test marketing advertising etc so that is that is one way to look at it then as the market approach it says that brand equity as the present value of the future economic benefits to be derived by the owner of the asset so again that is one one way to look at it and the third is income approach which argues that brand equity is the discounted future cash flow from the future earning stream for the brand that is again you know and you see both or, or all three should i say look at the strength and potential and that is how valuation is done i'll be coming back to you with lots of insights on how different organizations do that and how it becomes useful for all the organizations in the world at large till then goodbye